here, I'm going to mention that ancient cultures all over the world used to run two calendars successively, a secular calendar, which is typically like our modern calendar of 365 and one quarter days, and then they would have a sacred calendar of 360 days, and in five days intercalated, they would call it. And typically, they would do, whether it was the Greeks or the Egyptians or even the Mayans, ancient cultures all over the world had similar uh, traditions of setting those five days aside and they were considered to be unlucky. And so no, really no work, no activity, nothing. Nobody ever tried to do anything on those days. They would just take those days off, five days off, and then they would resume again and pick up their sacred year of 360 degrees. Now the Sumerians had a belief that the year was once actually 360 days in length. And that somewhere along as a result of some cosmic catastrophe of some undefined sort, the day was each second corresponding to one year of the great year. You'll discover it's exactly 432 minutes. 25,920 hours in turn is 1,080 days. And 25,920 days is equal to 72 years in the sacred calendar. Which is interesting because I think if you most uh, determinations of the average human lifespan right now in history is about 72 years. So you could think of a human lifespan as being equivalent to one day of the great year. There's an interesting proportional relationship going on there between the total processional cycle of 25,920 years and one human lifetime. In the Vedas, they had various ways of encoding uh, references to numbers. Let the Brahmin hear the praise we utter. This hast the four-horned buffalo emitted. Four are his horns, three are the feet that bear him, his heads are two, his hands are seven in number. Notice four, three, two, raised to the seventh power gives you the number of years in the ancient Vedic time span, the Kalpa, 4 billion, 320. Measure that, we discover its radius is 432,000 miles, which of course means that its diameter is 864,000 miles. So notice that we measure the sun according to the human measure of miles. And by the way, um, what is the origin of the, the mile unit that we use? Anybody know, origin of the mile? Origin of the mile, it comes from the Latin word mil, which means a thousand. So it's talking about a thousand something. What would it be talking about? A thousand what? A thousand paces that average 5.28 feet in length. Um, it actually goes back, we know that Romans were using a mile, there were a thousand paces and they would lay out, Rome for example had a city center and everything was measured outwards from that city center according to paces and those paces were um, a thousand of them gave the Roman mile. The Roman pace was a little bit shorter, 160. Remember I said that 1,080 or 108 and it's double, 2160 was a lunar number. See this is a clue to you now. There are several references for example um, in the Sumerian tradition describing the ark built by Zisithrus, which is being described as a cube that makes no sense. You think, what kind of a ship is it that would be described as a cube? You know, that wouldn't be very seaworthy, a cube, right? But it's not referring to an actual ship as we think of it. It's referring to the cubing of the sphere. And in this case, the sphere that it's referring to is the moon, which was symbolically considered to be an ark um, to many of the ancient cultures that believe that the earth was periodically destroyed by great catastrophes. So we have the number 1080, and we have the number 2160. And then we have the earth. Yeah, that's the earth. And again, because of the spinning of the earth on its axis, we have this difference between the polar diameter, 7899, or just thinking round number 7,900 miles, and the equatorial diameter 7,926. So that creates a 26 mile difference. And thank, thank you for that 26 mile difference because life on Earth would be a very chaotic affair 
without that bulge. We see that the diameter of a sphere with the same surface area as Earth is 7,920 miles. And also the diameter of the Earth, when you take it from, if you slice it through the Tropic of Cancer through to the Tropic of Capricorn, that diameter also is about 7,920. So we use 7,920 as the sacred number to represent the Earth because um, even though the Earth varies considerably between equatorial and polar diameters, we find that um, at a very significant piercing through of the Earth's diameter from one tropic to the other tropic, it turns out to be 7,920 miles. We also find that if we take a perfect sphere that has a, the same area, the same surface area as the Earth actually has, its diameter would be 7,920 miles. Parallels are lines that run, hor that parallel to the equator. And traveling along one of the parallels, we would be displacing ourselves longitudinally. But parallels actually measure, you can see that this parallel here, this is probably the Arctic Circle. It looks to me like about 66 and a half degrees north. So it is parallel to the equator, right? So depending on what parallel you are, every line of latitude north and south has a corresponding parallel and you know that from the equator to the north pole is going to be 90 degrees and likewise from the equator to the south pole is going to be 90 degrees of arc. Then in turn we have meridian lines which are lines that run north-south but actually measure distances east and west so that if you traveled from one meridian to the next to another meridian you would have traveled from east to west. Every point on the surface of the Earth has a local meridian. We have a local meridian here, and it's basically the way you would find it is if you walked out here, I believe this is generally south, isn't it, this way? So if we went out here and we looked exactly south and exactly north, and then the zenith overhead, the point 90 degrees up from a flat horizon, and we struck an arc from the south point, measuring the base, this is a reconstruction from uh, 1991 work on uh, ferronic stonemasonry. And this shows that outside the corners, which was the, the core masonry, there are these sockets. And I found one picture showing a socket. This is showing one of the sockets that's still there that sits outside the core masonry. But based on those sockets, they were able to reconstruct what the original base of the pyramid would have looked like. So here would have been the 51 degrees, 51 minutes, coming down, sitting on the 55 centimeter thick sockle here, like this. Well, what this did was it gave two ways of measuring the perimeter of the pyramid's base. One could be measured from this point up on top of the sockle. The other could be measured from down here that included the sockle. So what you ended up with was two ways of measuring the pyramid's base. Well, which one was the correct one? Well, they were both correct. I think that they were actually intending to embody in there that there were two ways of measuring uh, the pyramid's base. So what we have is the length of the base on the sockle, which is the shorter of the two up there. It was varied from side to side. You'll notice 755 at the smallest to 756 just over at the largest. So there was some variation. There was probably a reason for that variation actually, um, but we won't get into that because it just gets too technical for what we're talking about today. But the total of those measured around the four sides would be 3,023.139 feet. If you're taking notes, that'd be a good number to write down. Okay, so now let's see what the measure is around that includes the sockle or the base. And we see that it's, each side is a roughly five feet longer, 760 to 761. Each side, again, is a little different, but we get a total of 3,043.433 feet. Okay, so I'm going to, over here, I'm going to write down a few numbers that we saw through our radius of the moon, diameter of the moon, uh, radius of the sun, diameter of the sun, number of seconds in a day would be 432,000, 43,200, 
Uh, number of seconds in a half a day, number of seconds in a full day, 86,400. What were some of our more other numbers? Oh yeah, 1440 was one, 7920. Diameter of the earth, just so they're up there in front of you, we can refer to them as we go on here. All right. So here is profile, the Great Pyramid with a 51 degree, 51 minute angle. I've just, to make it easy, I've just rounded off the numbers, 481 feet in height. That would be not including the, the socle, the base. 755.85, I just picked one to use. Um, and there's our 51 degree, 51 minute angle. And we find that when we measure, measure it this way, it turns out to be almost exactly 11 over seven, 3,949.83 miles. And notice the difference between the pyramid, which I call the standard polar radius, and World Grid System 72 is only 313 feet over the entire size of the Earth. So we have essentially the pyramid being a scale model of the Earth, the Northern Hemisphere, at a scale of 43,200 to 1. If we take the pyramid, enlarge it by 43,200, its height, including the socle, now becomes the polar radius of the Earth within 300 feet of our satellite surveys. Then the two measures of the base are exactly the difference between east-west difference and the north-south difference at a square minute at the equator. Now, how oh, exactly? And that's one of the first astronomical connections, and then there's many, many more connections with that number that we find occurring in sacred geometry. So all of this, there's a lot of silliness and accretion stuff that's accreted to that, the belief in that number by basically fundamentalists and superstitious people who don't look at the underlying science. But we will take a couple of minutes here and look at a few things. I lifted up, my, this is from the Old Testament, Zechariah, I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand, then said I, whither goest thou? And he said unto me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. Old Testament prophet, Zechariah. So here was the beginning of his, of his prophetic experience, his prophetic vision, as he sees this man who's got a measuring line in his hand. And he says he's gonna go measure the 